primitive rhythms and the ancient cult of voodoo are the heartbeat and lifeblood of the people who live in one of the world's most miserable countries. This is Haiti, a land of idol worship and of Papa Doc Duvalier. Together they ruin this once lovely, once prosperous country which sits on one end of the island of Hispaniola in the Caribbean. Nature endowed this place with fertility and natural beauty. It was left to the greed and ignorance of men to ruin it. Haiti's downward progress from flourishing French colony to become the world's poorest state reached its lowest point under the 14-year dictatorship of Francois Duvalier, which ended with his death in April. Duvalier's legacy to Haiti is poverty, ignorance, disease and misery. This week, Echo looks at Papa Doc's country, the beggar of the Americas, Haiti. Life is not only meagre in Haiti, but short. Malnutrition and ignorance combine to limit life expectancy to a mere 42 years. The principal medical services in the country were provided by a few volunteer teams who fought a losing battle against the power of voodoo priests and witch doctors who hold the bulk of Haiti's five million people under their spell. Those who survive do so on the lowest living standard in the world. For most, scratching a living from the earth and offering its fruits for sale in a buyer's market is the only way to subsist. The average earnings in Haiti have remained at the starvation level of about $70 a year ever since Papa Doc Duvalier took over the country. But most of Haiti's densely packed population manage on less. But there is a fatalism about the Haitians which enables them seemingly to live with the violence and bloodshed which have been the backdrop to Haiti's 167 years of existence. A bus ride away in the towns, the same lethargy hangs in the air like mist. Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti, was formerly the outlet for the country's rich coffee harvest, which once made this half an island the richest in the Caribbean. Now the town, like the long-lost riches, is decaying. But there are still the rich in Haiti. They live in these curiously styled colonial homes in the suburbs of the capital. As for the poor, their interests were only temporarily engaged some years ago when Papa Doc created Duvalierville. It was to have been a new town that was in fact a shoddy public relations exercise, which in the depressing manner of the Duvalier regime was quietly forgotten after the first few months of activity. Of course, the people paid for Duvalierville through Papa Doc's normal method of shakedown and hold up. Extortion was a major factor in Haiti's economy, just as armed force was and still is the prop which held the whole edifice together. Few people, it can be safely said, have been so downtrodden, so badly used as the Haitians under Duvalier. His power was the power of the gun, his politics the politics of the firing squad. The ceremonial panoply with which Duvalier surrounded himself was never more than a camouflage to cover the absolute power he himself held. He and those around him wove a spell of terror over Haiti, conjured up out of voodoo mysticism and administered at gunpoint. Understandably, perhaps, Duvalier rarely spoke to visiting pressmen. When he did so, he countered any suggestion that his was a despotic regime with bland denials and in tones of injured innocence. This interview with an American reporter is typical. Who can stop the American press or 
à tout autre. Any other from making accusations. There are police forces in all countries. I do not think the police of my country can be considered more brutal than any other. The forces of law and order have done their duty. While there may have been germs of political opposition, they were rarely heard inside Papa Doc's Haiti. The forces of law and order, as represented by this motley collection of armed police, effectively snuffed out whatever opposition there might have been. Ill-trained except in violence, inefficient except in extortion, they would have been laughable had they not been so deadly. Duvalier himself was rarely seen in the streets. When he did venture out, he always carried a Tommy gun and a pocket full of money, the two extremes of persuasion and equally effective in their ways. And there were always the Tonton. In fact, a band of armed thugs with absolute power of life and death the Tonton and Makut were vested with dark and mysterious power in the half-world of voodoo. In the popular imagination, the Tonton and Makut represented a deity which could snatch men away and carry them off to a kind of hell. And the reality was not far behind the fable. It was the Tonton who whipped up the artificial worship of Duvalier and who made a godhead of Papa Doc, the country physician, the sick and ruthless man who ruled Haiti for 14 memorable years. Duvalier was enthroned as Haiti's president for life, but was determined that his creed should endure beyond death. He appointed his son, Jean-Claude, as his successor, a move endorsed without dissent by a national referendum earlier this year. For the Haitians denied him nothing. He used his scroll of office like a wand to spellbind the poor and ignorant into the belief that Papa Doc's medicine was good for them. But in the end, Duvalier was a recluse. The palace was ringed by anti-aircraft guns and the national armory was locked in the cellar and only he had the key. Three attempts to displace him left their mark on the palace and on him. Like many other dictators, he was his own prisoner. Duvalier's life presidency ran out on April the 22nd this year. His lasting monument can only be Haiti itself, a stricken, poverty-ridden, fearful country from which he himself sucked the lifeblood. Before he arrived, Haiti was a state of revolution, plot, assassination and backstabbing. But Papa Doc kicked even that degree of life from it and handed over to another Duvalier, a country without a heart or a hope. When they carried Papa Doc to his grave, some of his people wept for him. And perhaps that is the greater tragedy, for few men ever deserved fewer tears. Outside observers had confidently predicted that his death would trigger off a revolt against all he had lived for. After 14 years of Duvalier, they said, Haiti would revenge itself on him and those who helped him cling to power. But it didn't. Instead, they wept to see him go. Duvalier is dead. Long live Duvalier. 
The high priest has departed, but for the time being anyway, the spell he cast remains unbroken. <laughs>